God, we give you thanks and praise anytime we can gather together, whether it be online or in person. And just remember to say thank you. Just in your presence, praise you and thank you for how you have brought us through the week, O oh God, and how you are sustaining us and with us even now. Open our ears and our eyes, our minds and our hearts to see you and hear you in a new and in a fresh way this morning. And now hide me behind the cross. Decrease me, O oh God, and increase you within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I had said during the children's message, our December sermon series is Deck the Halls, decorating uh, our lives with what matters. And this morning's message is titled Deck the Halls with Hope. Ukiavik, Alaska, also known as Barrow, Alaska, they changed the name from Barrow back to the native name Ukiavik in 2016. But they experienced polar nights every year. And polar nights happen when the sun sets for the last time in the year on November 18th or 19th and remains below the horizon for 66 days. The sun lightly touches the horizon again on January 22nd or 23rd and completely rises again by January 27th or 28th. When the polar nights happen, there's a little bit of daylight called civil twilight, where daylight resembles what happens during dawn or dusk. Polar nights happen because the earth is tilted completely away from the sun. And Ukiavik is one of the coldest places on earth, and it's the northernmost point in the United States. Residents there prepare to live in darkness by taking vitamin D supplements and using special lamps to regulate their moods. There are also special lights uh, throughout the town that light the way for travel and daily living during this time. Now those of us who don't live in places like this, living in deep darkness for a week, let alone 66 days, would be torture. It would likely feel hopeless and isolating and lonely. But for people in Ukiavik, polar nights are a common occurrence in their way of life. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Today's scripture reminds us that like the residents of Ukiavik, Alaska, who lived for 66 days in darkness, humanity lived and walked in darkness before the light of God came. These verses in Isaiah talk about the righteous reign of the coming king of Israel and how when that king comes, all will be free from oppression. The coming king of Israel will multiply the people of Israel and increase their joy, break the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders and break the rod of their oppressor just like God did with Gideon and the Israelites against Midian. When the coming king of Israel comes, he will have all authority and it will grow continually. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He will bring endless peace and he will establish his kingdom with justice and righteousness from now until forever. These seven outcomes are what happens when the King of Israel comes. The first thing to recognize about the king's coming is that freedom from oppression and new life will happen because God is passionate about it and wills for it to be so. The last line of the scripture for today says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word zeal means enthusiasm or passion. And the word light in our passage for today is the same Hebrew word for light that was used in Genesis 1 when God created out of darkness and nothingness. The second thing to recognize about the king's coming is that his arrival does not deny or ignore the need for hope, the need for humanity to look toward and expect a reality other than our current one. The arrival of the king of Israel's reign confronts the deep darkness and shines the light of hope. In our world, we do not like to confront anything 
anything negative or anything that causes us pain and suffering. That's one of the reasons that this time of mask wearing and social distancing is so hard. Because we are confronted with the shadow of death every day. Because managing grief has become a daily reality. And for some of us, we do everything in our power to deny and dismiss the presence of pain and suffering in our lives and others' lives. And the main tool we use to do this is what some of us call today toxic positivity. How many of you know what that is or have heard of that? Toxic positivity. Now, even though this tool has a new name, toxic positivity has always been around, and we have all used this tool with ourselves and others from time to time. Toxic positivity is defined as the overgeneralization of a happy, optimistic state that results in the denial and the minimization and the invalidation of the authentic human emotional experience. Toxic positivity is demonstrated most when we use phrases like this. Don't worry, be happy. Don't think about it, stay positive. Failure is not an option. Everything will work out in the end. And my personal favorite, positive vibes only. These phrases are not helpful and they're unrealistic. Because for many of us, our realities are filled with worry. They make us think and overthink a lot, have failure as the only option, are extremely overwhelming, and may never work out the way we had hoped or the way that we wanted to work out. Toxic positivity is empty. And so is toxic hope. Therapist Mark Sadoff wrote an article titled, Toxic Hope Affects Marriages and Relationships, and in it, Sadoff discusses the fact that toxic hope is about accessing hope by working against pain and suffering. He defines toxic hope as the kind of hope that allows damage to continue to occur despite the absence of real evidence that things are changing. Toxic hope and toxic positivity are similar because both outlooks encourage us to deal with pain and suffering by not acknowledging it. Both outlooks encourage us when we encounter pain and suffering to lie about our negative feelings and situations, to work harder to change our reality, to resist pain, to focus on what cannot be done, and to isolate ourselves from one another and God. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. The coming King of Israel, our wonderful Counselor and mighty God and everlasting Father and Prince of Peace, came, has come, and always comes to confront the evil and oppressors of this world that cause pain and suffering. The King of Israel, Emmanuel, comes to confront the systems of oppression by first confronting the sinful hearts of humanity. Our hearts decked in selfishness and greed and malice and division and anger and bitterness and resentment. The King of Israel does not engage toxic hope by leaving us the same and hoping we will just learn to love God and neighbor well. Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, comes to show us a different way. A way filled with justice and righteousness and light. A way filled with realistic hope. God's kingdom is based not on toxic hope, but realistic hope. Hope filled with meaning and purpose and direction. The realistic, grace-filled hope the King of Israel, Jesus Christ, gives us, frees us from the oppressors and systems of oppression that hold us, so we can be bringers of that same hope to others. Realistic hope, the hope that Jesus gives, sounds like this. This pandemic is here, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm afraid of the future, and God is with me in it. This Thanksgiving wasn't the same, and I thank God for the food on my table and the job that I have. I live with clinical depression, and God has provided healing for me 
in the form of a great therapist and medication. Humanity was walking in deep sin and darkness and the eternal light. Emmanuel, the righteous king, the prince of peace, saves us. Realistic hope, the hope Jesus gives, does not wait for darkness or grief or pain or evil or suffering to end. Realistic hope, the hope that Jesus gives, shines while it's still dark, frees while oppression is still present, and brings new life in the midst of death. Church, are we ready to meet Jesus this Advent season by decking the halls of our hearts with realistic hope? If not, my, you are, bless you. If not, my hope and my prayer is that we would deck the halls of our hearts with hope as we walk towards and journey towards the manger to meet Jesus in a new way. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the ways that you move and live and have your being in each of us each and every day. I give you thanks, O oh God, for your divine hope. The hope that does not call us to ignore the grief and the pain and the suffering and the problems that we may encounter every day. That it calls us to trust you in it all. God, help us to continue to put our eternal hope in you, the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, if the word or worship has been a blessing to your spirit or to your soul in any way this morning, we invite you to go to www.goodshepherdumc.com and give today. If you physically brought your offering with you, we also invite you to place it in the offering plate as you came into the worship space this morning. And then there is a plate right here at the altar. <coughs> Uh, yesterday, um, a few of us came in and we decked the halls in a way, as you can see, uh, we decorated uh, the worship space, and um, y'all, I have to tell you that um, it was work. It was work. And I woke up this morning and I remembered that even though we may not feel like putting our hope in God, and even though things may feel hopeless, we can still continue to press our way to the throne of praise to the God that gives us all hope. And we can encounter eternal hope and eternal peace, eternal love, and eternal grace to give us more strength for the journey. I give thanks and praise to God to the people who were here yesterday. I give thanks and praise to God for all of you who are in person worship and those of you who join us online in worship. You all are a continual point of hope for me. Uh, in my ministry, as we continue to shine Jesus' light uh, in our community and beyond. So again, if the word of worship has been a blessing to your spirit or to your soul in any way this morning, we invite you to go to www.goodshepherdumc.com today. 